We condemn the violence. Rasta no promote no violence. Give me all. so 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 hard to ensure that you play your part in building a better country a better uganda even amidst the prevailing difficulties thank you very much fellow citizens and in a special way i want to thank the people that have received us in the many districts where we have been um 
holding our campaign meetings right from the people of Mbarara who received us when we were launching our manifesto. We thank you very much to the great people of Bangkore, Mwebari Munonga, Mwebari Baramba, and Mwebari, Mwebari Munonga, to the people of West Nile, Awadi for to the great people of uh, Lango, Afoyo Matek, to the people of uh, Usoga, Mwebari Ino, Mwebari Vakagwa, Mwebari, Mwebari Ino, Mwebari Idara, um, to our brothers in Acholi land, Afoyo, Afoyo Bear, to the people of Teso, Yalama Noi, 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 Noi. Um, to our brothers in Karamoja, Alakara Noi. To our brothers uh, in Bugishu, Mwanyara Navi, Mwanyara. Uh, to our brothers in Bukedi and all these other areas, Mwebali Muno. Thank you, thank you very much. We salute you. Um, we had gone to different districts. Uh, in different sub-regions. Of course, before the Uganda police and military rudely um, interrupted our program. Um, to this end, I send special greetings to the people of Luoka who were arrested from, from Luoka. But we salute to the people of Luoka for the welcome. Uh, we send this message to the people of the, the people of Kamoli, the people of Mpiji, the people of Masaka, Liantonde, Chiruhura, Mbarara, Isinjiro, Ntungamo, and Rukonjiri districts. Uh, we were not able to meet you because of the violent and illegal arrests that you saw um, that we are, of course, imposed to us by the state. But we had even been earlier blocked from uh, accessing Kitgum and uh, accessing... Uh, um, Sironko and Bujiri who are not able to go there. I am persuaded although that uh, Mr. Museveni was blocking us from seeing these people because he knows the kind of mess that he has created in these places. So he could not stand us going there to tell them the truth. I am persuaded that uh, he knows that when we go there, we, you know, we will just show them the mess, which I'm sure they've been seeing for a long time. You notice Museveni stopped me from uh, carrying on our, um, my nationwide music shows because he knew that through music we were showing people the obvious, we were opening people's eyes. And indeed, he stopped me and the team from... Uh, going around the country to carry on uh, our consultations because he knew he does not want us to communicate because the more we interact is the more people's eyes get opened. But <laughs> too bad for him. The people are already fully alert. They already they understand what's going on in their country. So I salute all efforts, all friends um, in the struggle that have play their part to ensure that our people are fully awake because we all see that people are fully awake. Our fellow citizens, while President Museveni and his surrogates are going around holding rallies, holding processions, they are beating us, torturing us, killing people and throwing us in prisons for doing the same. He knows that even when he was, uh, you know, encouraged to postpone the election, he was looking at this COVID-19 pandemic as an opportunity to rig the election, to play his usual game. But again, <laughs> he realized that not even the pandemic can stop the people from coming out. And uh, that's exactly what happened. Now, having seen that he has no other option, he resorted to his usual brute force, unleashing terror to the, you know, innocent citizens. And uh, that's exactly what, what was happening. He arrested me and many other comrades and dropped us in Narufenya. Why? Because he had no other options. Museven did not want to 
us to speak to the people of Luka because he knew we were going to tell them that uh, you know more than 79% of the people of Luka live on Tadoba, but Tadoba or Paraffin, more than 79% of the people of Luka with the great resorts that is in Busoga. He knew that uh, we were going to tell them that more than 87% of the people of Luka rely on firewood for survival. He knew that I was going to tell the people of Luka that only a quarter, 25% of the people of Luka have permanent houses. A quarter of the population. He knew that. That's why he stopped us. I mean, by the way, in a special way, Abantu Baluka, Maramusa Kuino, Gualimu Kisaguamani, Okwira Kwe Waifwe, Rachi Luka, Ndeta Waifwe, Zebaba Wange, Ngatana Fwa, Yanko Banti, Omukuba Dada Dada Wange, Mudi 18 something, Yaliwe Luka, Eraba Muzika Luka, Variba Mweta Bwago, um, Era uh, ndikuida kufuna yo luna kulala Nje eruke yo kumalanga wiki Ndala nonye nonye kumalera tifuvange Abomu luka uh, Nchidi nti uh, Abalarabaka liyo ayabandi Vase ngukaira bajai ganga Era ndidi nti abakaire bomu iganga Baidi omukaire baliveta Bwagu sekai e, Yali mudingu ino au miganga ya famu miaka ja 1950s baba wa yankoba uh, oyomukairo ya dada wange uh, baba oya tola kweri na ya sekai na wa mutabani wange mutabani wange veta solomon kampala sekai elili na ya ya dada wange eh bali ba mweta bwagu sekai yali mudingu a uh, we we iganga eh, kale no Mbono ti abantu wiku so gabane nda ino Ae zena mbe nda ino E yotin so vibaba Zendi wiku so gandi mwana waluka So I salute you my brothers and sisters I knew Museveni would not allow me to come and tell you these things Face to face Because he has survived by dividing us along tribal lines Along religious lines But now he sees a generation that's so connected As if this connection was made in heaven so he's so scared uh, about us coming together. Museveni did not want me to step in Buyende because I would have told the people in Buyende that despite paying a lot of uh, you know, taxes, over 70% of them have no access to drinking water. I would have told them that. I would have told them that over 90% of the people in Buyende aged above 15 years, they only have senior four as a maximum level of education he didn't want me to tell them that he didn't want me to say that uh, over 4,900 households in Buyende lack toilets and uh, over 93 percent don't live in decent houses he's scared of that he does not want me to tell our people that they are actually slaves in uh, their own country these statistics I'm giving you are from you know uh, government, a government agency, Yubos. So, Museveni is scared of that. Museveni knows that we can break it down for our people so that they really know how much he has robbed our country, how much he has impoverished our people, how much, uh, uh, how serious an agency it is for us to get him out of power, to rid ourselves of, uh, you know, of a looter, he did not want that. However, we are able at least to share this now. He didn't want me to come to Kamori because he did not want me to remind our people there of the persistent lies that he has been telling them, promising one thing after another. He didn't want that. He didn't want me to remind the people of Kamori about the sick healthcare system. He didn't want me to, to remind the people of Busoga of how much he has killed their education. I've, I told a few people that I met in Busoga that my dream as an artist was to go to Namasagari College when I was still um, a school-going boy 
Namasagari College was a dream of every talented, uh, of every artistically talented young man or woman. But look what happened. Busoga College Mwiri, we all wanted to go to Busoga College Mwiri. We, always, we all wanted to go to Butiki. We all wanted to go to, to, to schools like Wanyange Girls. But now, they are more or less gone. So Museven did not want us to remind our people that way. Um, and that's why he blocked us. The same can be said in the districts uh, where Museven have been blocking us from reaching. Um, during the past weeks, of course, we had the opportunity to go to different districts. I went to Karamoja and the site of poverty you see in Karamoja, a naturally endowed area. It is very sad, you know. Oh, I met some people, um, some young children, evidently malnourished, as if we are, you know, parading them for the journalists to come and take pictures. But the sad irony was that besides these malnourished children, they were still hungry-looking young men holding brand new AK-47s being used to keep their people in poverty. That is the reality in Uganda. Hungry mothers, hungry fathers, miserable people. This and more is what was happening in places we go to. Hungry and mean-looking soldiers holding brand new weapons but on their side miserable children with no future to speak of but it reminded me that that is how Museveni sees us he sees us as his slaves he sees us as people that are only supposed to be used as tools for him to milk our country the people of Uganda will recall that in his inaugural speech in 1986, President Museveni branded him, uh, himself, I mean, leaders like himself today as, you know, pathetic, a pathetic spectacle. He said in 1986, and I quote, he said, the Honorable Excellency, who is going to the United Nations in executive jets, but has a population at home of over 90% walking barefoot, is nothing but a pathetic spectacle. He said that. And now he's reminded of what he was saying. So, brothers and sisters, Museveni is doing this because he knows. Because he knows he has no way. He has to use violence now. We are here, but we are mourning the death of more than 50 recorded young men and women, innocent citizens. Many of them were going about their business and they were shot dead. Many of them were only speaking out against injustice. He sentenced them to death because he believes that by threatening anybody that dares to speak out, he will be silencing us. I also saw the Minister of Security, General Eri Tumwine, Confirming that indeed their police has the power to execute any citizen. We condemn that and we continue to tell him that the people of Uganda will be free. Of course, Museveni did not want me to go to Masaka, Ochiruhura, or Rukunjiri, or Ntungamo because he's scared he does not want people to show support. He has always been claiming that uh, our support is only in the central region, only in urban areas. But I'm sure the truth was clear for everybody to see that indeed the people of Uganda from all corners, from north to the south, from the west to the east, all of them are yearning for change. All of them are ripe for change. You all notice that they've tried as much as possible to brand us as violent. And as I always reiterate to our comrades in the struggle, that we are nonviolent and we don't intend to use violence 
whatsoever to achieve our desired goal. We don't believe in violence. We know the regime is uh, trying as much as possible to brand us violent so they can, you know, respond to us with violence. And sadly, these people that are being used to make violence to innocent citizens, they are equally miserable. I met a, an, an elderly man in a Nebi who has been a police officer for a long time. He struggled as much as possible selling even the land that his uh, parents left to him to take his son through school. He has a son who wants to be a police officer. Of course, he studied uh, economics, but after four years of graduation, he has not found a job. But this man, all through his career, all through the 40 years of him serving in police, he has been promoted only once. He has lived to witness the sons and daughters of those who are well known fly through the ranks past him. But now his son wants to join the police. Yes, I mean after his bachelor's degree, he has not gotten a job. He's at crossroads seeking advice from me. And me, my advice to him was to vote, to come out and vote because this cannot be fixed if we don't have a better leadership. This cannot be fixed if we don't have a leadership that uh, considers, you know, merit while uh, promoting the men and women in uniform. Of course, so many other people that I met, uh, the young nurses, there's even a nurse that was, uh, you know, fired for interpreting for me when I went to, um, where is this before? To Nebi. No, to Parkwatch, actually. I was in Parkwatch. This nurse is uh, going through trouble. For translating words that are not inciting violence, for translating words that are only communicating a message of freedom. My fellow Ugandans, I only want to encourage you to be firm. I only want to encourage you to believe in change that is before our very eyes. We are going to the polls on January 14th. Although Museveni and his people are trying as much as possible to stamp it in our minds that we don't have a right to change our fortunes through a vote, although they've unleashed brute force trying to communicate to us that even when we vote him out, he has the capacity to rig the election. But I want to give you confidence, my brothers and sisters, that it is possible. We have seen more brutal dictators around us. But the power of people of the people has prevailed. And the people's voice has ultimately reigned supreme. So I want to give you confidence. I want to give you encouragement. It is sad that we lost our people. It is sad that our country continues to be divided by people that know how dangerous it is to divide us, but we as a generation should stick together. We as a, a people should remember that we are stronger together and we are more united than divided. All through history, these dictators, they unleash brute force. They use young men and women to brutalize their fellow citizens but when it's time for them to go, they run away alone. I want to send a message to our brothers and sisters in uniform, those in police, those in the military, those in prisons, and all security agencies. Friends, do not be misled by these men and women whose future is already behind them. Please don't be misled. I want you to remember that you are living in a generation where everything is on camera. And I'm sure you've seen in the past that at the end of the day, each officer that abuses the rights and freedoms of the people ultimately answers individually. We know many of you 
are good citizens. We know many of you are good officers. I've interac uh, interacted with many of you. And indeed, you have communicated to me that you don't like the orders that you are being given. So, I appeal to you to stick by what you are trained. You are not trained to brutalize Ugandans. For you, the police officers, you are trained to protect life and property of the citizens. You are trained to keep law and order. You are officers of the law. For the soldiers, the military men and women, you are trained to protect Uganda and its sovereignty. Your enemies are not the Ugandans. So don't be used. We know also that the regime decided to use some bandits, like historically it's known um, that uh, the regime has used bandits, or they have been bandits themselves in the past. So they've decided to use some armed hooligans who show up on our streets without uniform, but, you know, wielding dangerous guns, AK-47 and others, shooting and murdering unarmed civilians. I want to remind you, friends, that there will be a time of answering questions. So, whatever you do, remember that one day you're going to answer. Now, to President Museveni and his hunger zone. You have spoken the way I'm speaking in the past. Only that, very disappointingly, you don't want to be reminded of your words. Mr. President, all we are saying is, be a man of your word. You know, it is you, the elders, that teach us to keep our word. You say, if you're a man... You keep your word. So all we're asking of you, Mr. President, is keep your word. Be a man of your word. You said Africa's problem, and Uganda in particular, are the leaders that overstay in power. You one time said a fundamental change had come to Uganda. You one time said you will not preside over a, a, a government where people are killed and you don't know the killer. You one time said that you went to the bush because Obote killed your people, because Amin killed your people. These are the same reasons that you gave for picking up guns and convincing young men and women of that time, our age of that time and even younger, to join you in what you called a liberation struggle. But here we are, 40 years later, you are killing our mothers, you are killing our fathers, you are killing a population who are supposed to be your grandchildren. You are presiding over a regime of blood and terror. Blood is flowing on the streets. We have appealed to you time and again that we are nonviolent. We have appealed to you to respect the words that you've said, to respect the words that you wrote in your books, the words that are in your book. Uh, by you and your team called Mission to Freedom, the words that are in your book called Sowing the Mustard Seed, the words that are in your book, what is Africa's problem? I continue to remind you, Mr. President, that we are not going to give up, sir. We are not going to give up because the law is on our side. We are not going to give up because the people of Uganda are on the side of the truth. The same truth that you are stopping us from telling the people. You said you were fighting to return democracy. Let democracy prevail. You know, be a real soldier. If you're a real soldier, you know, respect the rights of the people. If it is democracy, let it be democracy. Respect fair play. Let the people of Uganda decide. I know many of you fellow Ugandans have asked us what we shall do to President Museveni after we defeat him. I've said it and I'm saying it again, that that now entirely depends on him. It depends on how he wants to go out. If he respects the voices 
of the people of Uganda, we would be happy to respect him, to retire him with dignity, and of course to have him as a resident, former president, who can even guide. But if he decides to go the Gaddafi line, to go the Bashir line, to go the Mugabe line, that still depends entirely on him. So finally, to the people of Uganda, I want to remind you that this is not only about a certain section of people. It's not only about young people. And yes, it's not only about elders. It's about all of us. This is about all of us. Bad roads will not ask what tribe you are or what religion you are or where your family is before they kill you in an accident. A badly governed country will not, you know, discriminate. Some of you have seen young ladies that were not political at all. Some of them did not even know they are slaves in their own country. Going about their usual business, murdered. A young lady who was carrying food to a customer, murdered. We saw even a university lecturer, murdered. So... We are all in danger until none of us is in danger. It is important that we all play our part, those in Uganda and those in the diaspora. We, the leaders, all we can do is offer ourselves to lead the charge. But everybody is equally important. I want to encourage all of you, brothers and sisters, to encourage those that you can reach to come out in large numbers and vote. I repeat, come out in large numbers and vote. This is a, a protest vote. This is a revolutionary election. Let us embrace it. Let us go into it as a nation. My message to the forces of change. For starters, I want to appreciate all the fellow leaders. I want to salute you, Dr. Kizabesije. I want to salute you, all fellow leaders, General Mujisha Muntu, um, Honobono Batmao. I want to salute you, uh, General Tumukonde, and all other colleagues that stood in solidarity with me and the National Unity Platform when we were illegally incarcerated. We don't take that gesture of comradeship for granted. We thank you very much. And I really, really hope that we can go on working together and solidifying because, like I said before, none of us can easily succeed alone. But if we come together, we can chase this man away. We can put an end to this dictatorship if we all come together. If we all come together, this can be a life-changing opportunity for the people of Uganda. I've said it before and I say it again that the people of Uganda are already united. It's upon us, the leaders, and I'm really, really encouraged by the constant gestures of unity. We have the opportunity, and if we maximize it, Museveni and his regime of blood and terror will be history. I thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in and listening to me. I want to inform the people of Chenjojo, of Chegegwa, of Fort Porto, that we shall be with you tomorrow. And all areas where we've not come yet, we shall be coming there. The people of Busoga, the people of Sironko, the people of uh, Kitgum, where we've not been able to reach we are making efforts to adjust our program to ensure that we come there physically so that we share these facts physically, so that we share these truths physically. I know the regime <coughs> will try as much as possible to block us. I know they'll try as much as possible to ensure that we don't reach you with the message of freedom. So in the meantime, before we come to you, 
I want to request all the leaders, wherever you are, to ensure that you send this message out there. Um, Abariyomu Ankore, message mujongereyo. Abanababu Soga, message mujongereyo. Mwena mwena, abadi mbitundu vya Uganda vya nja uro. Message yeyo mujongereyo, baganda bange. Obude tuina butono, atenga tuino kutukiriza. Ichiroto chaba na Uganda, ichokubera free, monsi ya abwe. So njaga loba saba, mwena, obaka wano mbongere yote, mwichitulekera, because it's not about us alone, it's about all of us as a nation. Obaka mbongere yo, haba ntumba jimu kutia. Ni wanku bade, eno government ya msebe ni, esaze uo okusumulura etemu. Iranga tumanyi, baiza no kongera mutemu ya abwe. Njaga loba jukiza. Tibuli government ya manache marira. Ebe gendo kugwa. Ekole bikolo vero. Benji. Bwebiti. Tibuli government ya manache marira. Ebe gendo kugwa. Ekola ebikolo vero. Benji. Bwebiti. Ne maririza. Egude. Zene chimpe suvi. Kwe kumanya. Nti chene chata. Ndi katecha sobola kuda mawega. Kwe kumanya. Nti bana Uganda. Kwa na. Bagude wa maso. Nebo mkwata noteka mkomera, nebo bako bachiboko, nebo bako irati ya gasi. Chino techa sobola kudama bega. Echono chimpa nyo esubi, chimpa amanyi, chinyo ngero kukiririza mchuka chukenu. Elana mwenjaga na mkiririze mchuka chukenu. Uh, to all our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, thank you very much for the support. Mwebali nyo, mwebali redala, abali muafrika, abali Europe, abali Asia, abali America, mwena mwena. Mwebali, mwebali redala. Mwekutuwa langobu denga, kuma honga, njoki rakona mwe. Kuwanga mwe mmanyi, mwisele visinga, tule mwa okugenda ku TV, obaku uzi radio station. Engele sungo mwenji jeza wambi, buwa abanji baba tisa tisa, mwela bintite tuina billboard ne mu. Kuwanga government ya waga na okutuwa billboards. Mwema mwusebe ni abadi wakuja <laughs> kuogela ko elie guanga. Na ye, butuwa gambi tugenda kuja tuogele ke elie guanga. Ya chitegede, nti aja kuswala. Yensonga luachi, taze kwa gerako elia abantu. Nchono chitu uomu kisa, ukuongero kula gensi, nti tacha ina katika sobola gamba abantu. Agamba, nti itayagala tusinkane abantu fizikale. Nene wano digitale, era tasobola. Ya gamba, nti agala kaluru ka scientific. Nena ka scientific, nakota ka sobola. Kubanga tasobola kutukiriza, kugenda ku TV, tasobola kutukiriza, Kugenda ku radio, neka tunda wa maanyi, nti social media wa diaji sako, omusolo, era stiru, tumusanga yo, era ne tumugoba yo. Era, ngabu mwiju ukulaba, ebisele vijia maso, tuja kufuko koze sa, buli imbera, ukula gaba na Uganda, timusebe ntacha inacha atu gamba. Ku social media, enamba zijia kweraba. Mujanu alinga tugenze mkulonda, enamba zijia kweraba. Asobolo kubabantu tia gas. Asobolo kuba abantu wa masasi na inga tasobola kola chi, tasobola kulemesa abantu connectinga. Tumanyiburu nji nti internet ya febade interrupted. Uh, every now and then I've been uh, signaled that the internet is being interrupted. But I know that after this message goes out there, lazima you comrades can always watch it again. I want to thank you ladies and gentlemen for being part of this. And I want to promise that every now and then I'll be coming to address you. I thank you. I encourage you to go on being assertive. <coughs> organize, organize, organize. Nebo tu bate tusinkanye mwena mwereba kulembeze. Echokola mchimanyi nembera yona mchimanyi. Jaga kusanyo ukuwewa zabo nabo na bebele demo mongeri eze njaulo. Mweba lenyo, mweba lile dala. Bana abasajia, tuba sobola. Na dala, nga tuku ataganyi. Na dala, nga tuwe tese tese. Tugende maso no kunonya akalulu. Mufube okulaba nga mutu ukabuli wa mu baganda bange. Don't leave this only to the politicians. Communicate with everybody. This is about all of us. Whether you are teacher or doctor or farmer or taxi driver or student. Wherever you are, whoever you reach, the issue should be a mission to freedom. <clears throat> Our issue should be mission to freedom. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for God. 
and my country.